How's it going? It's SP Pod. Stanford Steve in the room. Here, present. A home game for us both. This is a first during this college football season. Second. You're here for another one? South Carolina, LSU. It's hard to remember. It's a blur. I'm sure more for you than for me. <laughs> On a day when number three, number 10, number 11, number 17, number 18, number 24 all lose. Three of them at home. You were at the game where number three mm -hmm. loses. They were dogs at home. Game day was there. State College, a nooner. Folks up there not thrilled about the noon kickoff. Oh, God, enough. I'm just saying they weren't very happy about it. Oh, I heard them. I bet you did. Um, significant developments today. A mm. lot of moving pieces. A lot of interesting results. Eight and one day in winners. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> No one niner, no niner. Rice is still playing as we speak. I'm going to go ahead and give myself the dub there. They're up 17, catching 11. Yeah, our guy Mike Mon like think about this. Mike Monaco tweeted they're going to start at 10 o'clock. It's 11:30, and they're 14 minutes left in the fourth quarter. It's fine. Midshipmen, they adjust to the conditions. Hmm. They're going to be 0 and two in two games. Uh, it's not great. All right. I have, what do you got? I have two note cards. Multiple today. cards. Yeah, it, one card. Were was, you home alone or something? No, uh, we just. Well, we had a bunch of flag. Let me just tell you. I'm just. The, the youngsters are both on wagons. The Seahawks and the Texans. You see them across the field from you. Get your mind right. Okay. We're coming. Nice. We're coming for you. Um, game day in State College looked like an absolutely perfect day, and. Everybody knew the storylines. Mm -hmm. Day, Franklin, fan bases, a lot of angst about these particular types of games. Top five, records not great. And the emotion out of Ohio State when they won that game, I felt was really telling. That O-line, I get it. They were much maligned. They were banged up. They couldn't run it last week. They put this game on ice by running it off their own goal line and exhausting the clock. I thought you saw the emotion at a day, all his coaches, the O-line. And Howard's a Pennsylvania kid. So they, they knew we don't have any wiggle room here, or not a lot. And a lot of weird shit happened in that game, man. Turnovers oh. on goal lines. Think about how it started with Will Howard. Sure. You know? Penn State had first and goal from the one twice and got nothing. I'm just, there's more, we'll, we'll dive into the specifics, but just let, I want to work my way backwards from the result and your, your, how you kind of interpreted the things I'm saying about Ohio State. Did it seem as big to them, to you? Oh yeah, you saw it. Uh, you know, we talked ad nauseum about the, the idea of those two coaches and then what a loss would mean to either. And I was asked on College Football Live yesterday who had more pressure. I said Ohio State because they already had a loss. And I, I agree. And then you factor in what they did in the offseason between NIL and the money and getting Chip Kelly to come. Uh, it was, I don't want to say unprecedented, but it was at the top of everybody's favorite offseason. You know, I so mean, spend it. Look, the Dodgers just won the World Series. Spending money doesn't guarantee you're going to win, but they've spent like they better win. Correct. And when you look at how they did it, you talked about it. They come out, they're down 10 nothing. Like that? It was loud. It was not it was the loudest I've ever heard. Um, but yeah, they were fired. You know, they had their what, shakers. They call them shakers. I thought. I thought that's only down south. Down south, they call them shakers because if you call them pom poms, it makes the fellas a little uneasy. Okay. Uh hey, they Van Pelt. They're shakers. <laughs> you can call them whatever you want. You pal. want one? No. I'm, I'm all set. I'm gonna clap for my team. Yeah, if you see, if you dry, if you take the pom pom out, or a shaker out of your hand, you can you can make way more noise that way. <laughs> Do as you want. Uh so it's ten nothing. And Ohio State doesn't blink. Great drive. If you notice, they went to the right side 
where they had their two, uh, you know, their better tackle. Donovan mm-hmm. moved out to left tackle. That was the talk all week. Got to talk to Chip for two minutes. I said, you like your plan? He said, I love my plan today. I said, shit, I'm picking Penn State. And I thought that was going to be more of a factor. It goes to a credit of what those guys did. And again, what they look like after a bye off the Oregon loss last week. They could run it. They came into that game and Nebraska averaging over 208 yards rushing a game. They got held to 64, 2.1 yards per carry. Ryan Day, you saw him lose it on the targeting call. First thing in the press conference, we have to be able to run the football. They did. They come out. Uh, Will Howard was great. A couple just great play designs. They get uh, a Buka down in the corner of the end zone. It's 10-7. They get a stop. They get the ball back, and it's 14-10 right there. I'm like, they might win by 20. I thought they were gonna. Uh, I, uh, to Will t- Howard fumble was monumental. But yeah. then but then Penn State throws a pick in the end zone, which looked like you saw all the hands up. Everyone at State College thinks it's a touchdown. It wasn't. Uh, what a play. Amazing. Amazing. Um, the the thing that I was impressed by was that that place. If they jump you like that, and everyone's it's one hundred eleven thousand. I know there's a lot of Ohio State people there, but still, that's the perfect script. Perfect script. Hmm. You say to Penn State, you're going to score. You're going to get a pick six. Like you're up double digits. How much do I have to pay for that? They ate it, and then they scored twice, and it's like, okay, you, you guys having fun? Because we're 60 right here. So when Howard's going in, I'm thinking they're going to boat race him. And it it was an enormous, enormous Huge. turnover. And and I think they got it right. Yeah. I mean, that that's the call. But then Penn State, you've got to take advantage of it and I, I didn't feel like there was a ton of urgency there before the end of the first half this is a timeout yeah they got they let it go they lost like 30 seconds but um you know you still get it down there and you throw two fades uh back-to-back plays you get the pi you don't need it because he makes a great catch now it's first and goal you throw it again and that play is made and it's like good god what do we have to do to get over this hump and then before you know it being there the third quarter flew yeah it did flew by and you're sitting there and you're like the only touchdown penn state has is a defensive touchdown and they're still right there they, mm-hmm. they, it never got to two possessions um and it their chances abdul carter came up with some huge sacks at critical times he's so good but the biggest thing that i came away with is penn state receivers couldn't separate you saw Aller, he had time, and every time he goes through his progressions, no one, boom, he runs it. And it was effective early on, but on that third down, he couldn't get it. They couldn't They couldn't extend the drives. That's been an issue two years in a row for yep. Penn State, and then they had a sequence there where, look, the Ohio State wide receiver room is in its own kind of class. Yeah. But there was a series there a number of years in a row when Penn State was having guys come out that were difference-making wide mm-hmm. receivers, and – and they, they haven't had that in these last couple of years. And I get, you know, James has talked about their NILs behind a little bit, but they, they, they've got enough dough that they've got to have somebody. They've got to have somebody that, that can help Aller. And they, they, just, they just don't have a difference maker at wide receiver. They do have a difference maker who wears number 44. And how does he get a touch at the end? Had the longest run of the day. Mm-hmm. Had the longest reception of the day. They get down there. They got first and goal on the one. I'm direct snapping it to 44 four times in a row. I don't care. I'm not kidding. Because that guy's scoring. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's scoring. And for all the changes, and we're a fan. I never, How do you say the guy's name? Total Nicky. I, I never want to say it wrong. I always figure it out. Got a chance to meet his family this weekend, too. Well, great, great people. Okay, for all the issues you've had about play calling and this, that, and the other thing. I mean, you scored 13 points and your, de- your offense didn't score one of them. Not a touchdown. Yeah. And you're on the one, and you got 44. And how do you not figure it out? Snap! I'm not joking. Snap him the ball. Mm-hmm. See what happens. They didn't do it. No, I, I now that you say it too, I haven't seen him really tackled for a negative yard all year. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And 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 then that Ohio State team that couldn't run against Nebraska, and the their goalposts are shadows of their goalposts are on their helmet, mm-hmm. and they push Penn State backwards for five minutes. And the clock just bleeds 
and you lose again. And James Franklin gets into it with a fan going off the field. Like the stress has got to, it's there. What is it? Is it one in 13 or one in, was it, or now one in 14 against top five? It's one in 24 this century. Well, I'm just putting the, the James, the, 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 the games that James is responsible for. Mm -hmm. And I had the quote about good to great, great to elite. You mm -hmm. have my word. That was uh, eight years ago. I feel like it or was, no, it was when they, they lost the overtime, I think. It's young, I think. Here's, this is my perception of it. You're still there in the mix. I don't know what your best win is. At USC, they just got beat by Washington. They're four and five. Good luck. I watched that game. That offense. They got the ball in plus territory every single drive tonight against Washington. And they scored 21 points. I'll just give you the Mike Bone quote. Wasn't our intention to change the call at the Change the landscape of college football with one of the biggest moves in the history of the game. Four and five. That's what they say when they hired Lincoln Riley. Hmm. Four and five. What's, what's, what's Penn State's best win? That. Mm. Yeah. But they're, they're, the good news is that you're not out of the mix. And, and Franklin hasn't lied. You're, you're one of the you're one of the really good teams in college football. The issue is that when you measure yourself against this Ohio State team, when you measure yourself against Michigan last year, it's been these excruciating close losses. And I get the frustration. I'm sure no one's more frustrated than him. No doubt. They're 3 of, three of 11 on third down. They got to the one-yard line and couldn't score a touchdown. I mean, I don't know. I, this is where I say I'd rather get dump trucked than lose like that. Because these are the these like this is a long night into the to dawn, and yeah. you lose an hour. So it's going to take it's going to oh, take we're gaining an hour. Well, you it's going to take an hour longer for the sun to come up if you're trying. Oh, if you're just oh, yeah, if you're just yeah, trying yeah. to if you're just trying to flip the page of the calendar and start a new day. Um, that's tough, man. It's it's a hell of a win for Ohio State. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you saw it. Chip comes have. down on the field with Ryan Day and Will Howard. It's just awesome, awesome stuff. You could tell how much it meant to them. That's the uh, thing that stood out to me. This is a team that's played in a shit ton of gigantic games. Every game they play means that much to the other team. This yeah. game meant that much to them. Mm -hmm. And I get, I'll never understand because I'm not in it. It's just weird to me. You won't say Michigan. You put the X over the M. Like, come on. We're all grown-ups over here, man. Uh, it's your thing, not mine. Mm. Fine. This game was as significant as a Michigan game to them, and maybe some ways more, because the pressure of the, of the burn rate of the mm. money – Everybody knows you spent a shit ton to keep all those dudes around that could have left. You can't have two losses in November the 1st, 2nd, whatever no. the hell today is. No. Uh, and, they, and they don't. Exactly. Because when you, when you get the two losses, now you're in the hands of the committee. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. The Indiana game, obviously, uh, they were holding on. Now they're rooting their butts off for Indiana for two more weeks, one more week. I think it's two weeks. Two more weeks. It's the 23rd. Mm -hmm. uh, but going back to Penn State. Please. I said this on one of the shows I did. <laughs> the problem with Penn State is their good is really, really good. I would say it's good enough as anybody in the country. When you, But when they've played Ohio State, they haven't played well enough to win. When you get these opportunities, you got to be your best and not once – have they been their best? And that That's fair. You know, that that's in I, I say it all the time. We go to game day everywhere. We're at the biggest game. And you know, the home team, what do you think? What do you think? I'm like, you get this opportunity, you have to play well. If you don't play well and and you lose, like you have it's on you. There's a white boy in Detroit. <laughs> He's up in Detroit. Opportunity knocks once in a lifetime. 
for some, and they've had numerous. Or or it's knocked fourteen times and you've won once. Yeah, it that that's that's what's so frustrating. Has to be, and I'm and I'm an outsider. Yeah, I mean, but you listen. We one of our one of our most important cogs in our wheel of our show production is is she's from Penn State, and you see it. And we talked walking out the other night, and I said, I I said, I think you guys, I think it's your time. Mm-hmm. And it's we've said this about a number of teams this year. Like if if not now, when? You know, you yeah. got you got them at home, got them at your place. I don't know. I don't. Know. It's got to be. It's got to be frustrating as hell. The good news is it's not. This is not a disqualifying loss. No, not disqualifying. But if you, you may- won, you would have had a ninety-six percent chance to make the playoffs. You're in. That's tough. Of all these teams, I'm asking you, who do you want to talk about second? Is it a winner, a team who won, or a team who lost? A one. Who? Go ahead. Indiana. I love it because. I think it ought to dovetail off of this. You gave him out as your super dog, is that? Yeah, what? no, I gave Michigan State out as my super dog. It appears winners is going to go eight and one. My one loss will be Michigan State, and the, the 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 line I said on the segment was: Is Vegas really this bad at handicapping mm. a team? Are they really just going to allow you to just say, "How much can I get on Indiana? <laughs> can I lay them, lay them, and laugh?" I don't know why I'm doing that. You're right. You've been right yeah, every single every week. <laughs> every but see, my point is that the, the Vegas is in the business of just making a very public team who beats the crap out of everybody a spread that you can lay them and laugh. And when it's ten nothing Michigan State, who's feeling like a smart guy? Oh. This guy. Forty seven unanswered. They've never been nine and zero. Oh. No, they are. They better be double digit favorites against Michigan because they already are. Well, good. They were before this game. Okay. Well, they have to be because they're way better. Way better. And when they go to Columbus, I don't know. I mean, oh, they're going to line up. I'll tell you right now. Their offensive line is real. Rourke has been fantastic. Like watching him today, I don't know from from what I talk with talking with Thamel and then a couple guys on their team. They wouldn't say like, and I hear surgery on your thumb. You're done, right? Like, but but, but it, maybe but it wasn't I, a broken thumb. I, it was something else. No, I think it was. I think his fingernail came off, mm-hmm. and then there had to be. That sounds fun. Yeah, because I went back and watched the tape, and he's constantly in his in his. Uh, on his towel, like, but you could tell he can't. So I think, uh, not they put screws in. So I think he must have did something to the top knuckle, like the top of your. Of you your thumb. screw your nail back in. What is he, Frankenstein? No, but I, I think the top knuckle. That's why he couldn't grip it. But oh. now he's. But then he was already throwing before the Washington game. Uh, no, but like you, I watch him today. They add. Um, did you watch Texas Vanderbilt last week? I mean, it was on. It, some Te- of it what part texas runs a play down in the red zone where viewers get it's i don't i still got to go back and watch it but anyway he catches it and he literally just flips a wheel route out to the short side indiana ran that today for a touchdown like they're adding on stuff because their quarterback is playing at such a high level and they are as de- their skill guy said it when i saw him in person their skill guys are way faster and better than you think because they have an indiana helmet on that's and see, this is the thing. This is the point we started making several weeks ago. And their issue is going to be the same as Penn State. They don't have a win. Like they don't have a win that you point at and go, mm, "There's a win." So if they go to Columbus and lose, and then they win all their other games, Bear tweeted it out. Felica said, "Like if they lose that game, they'll they'll end up being twelve and one or eleven and one." without a a win over anybody that's been ranked so that is ranked like they they don't have anything penn state's gonna be the same way i understand that but their name's penn state yeah and this is the part that it's good to be you penn state because you're a a pro a tradition-laden program indiana is not but indiana has beaten the absolute piss out of everyone they've played (laughs) Including Michigan State, who led ten to nothing at home. Mm. 
47 unanswered. Yeah. And I just laugh because I don't mind being wrong. I just, it's wild to me. And this happens from time to time. And I don't love that I look at the everything through that Vegas lens, but it's hard for me not to. Because again, they're not in the business of opening up the back door to the gift shop and saying, how much do you want? Because for all the people that are like, hey, Van Pelt, nice pick. Look, you're right. And here's the great news. Apparently, you can do it. You, what's the most you're comfortable winning? Bet it next week on Indiana. Then take it and double it and do it again. Because apparently, they're free every week. That's how good they've been. So take the Vegas piece out and just say on the field. Look at what they do. Look at, And it's no... There's no nonsense with them. They line up and beat you and yeah. pound you. I mean, it's incredible what Signetti's done. It's one of the all-time things. Yep. And it only could exist in the NIL there's better than you know. Because they got dough for hoops. Like, you see the, the money they spent for those guys. But they got dough for, like, apparently Signetti, like, they, they promised me one thing. It's been way better than I thought. He got all those dudes from, from JMU. I don't know if it's a one-time thing. Whatever it is you've got right now, Indiana, and they lose to if they lose to uh, Ohio State, they should still be talked about as a playoff team. Oh, I think they're getting in. That's how about that? I just don't. We really got. <clears throat> I dove in on the ACC tiebreaker, uh, and how that's going to come down if well Clemson lost, so it's not going to come down to it. But it was going to come down to combined conference opponents win percentage that you beat and they all had the three easiest schedules so far right and it was like is this really what's going to happen uh-huh uh but anyway just going back to indiana it's like i guess vol- the validity they're they're you know it's it's there like and the committee is in a situation that's going to be absolutely brutal because how do you – you're going to have possibly two Big Ten teams with one loss that don't have a win over a ranked team at the end of the season. And don't play each other. And don't play each other. And probably aren't going to make the conference – no, they won't because it'll be Ohio State and Oregon. Because uh-huh. Ohio State would have beaten Penn State. They would have beaten Indiana. And Oregon would have beaten Ohio State. And that's undefeated versus one loss. And Ohio State gets well, the hey, benefactor. You know what Indiana can do? Go to Columbus and win. Yeah. Yeah. That that saves a lot of things. But just quickly on the playoff again, Go it goes back. I'm going to say it every week because I've said it from the beginning of the season. How are we going to judge the teams that lose in the conference championship game? Because we've just thrown them to the side forever in the four-team era. Look at Georgia last year. They were one. See ya. You're out. Now you're going to have a team, say like Indiana and in, in, uh, Penn State, you know, that has one loss sitting at home, and you're going to have a team that possibly could have a second or third loss. That's actually the most interesting question to ponder is, is that the, you should be rewarded for being good enough to get there. Are you going to be punished for losing if you do? I think it ought to be the, – the committee ought to take a page from the, the basketball committee who looks at tournament week and goes, we're not even – we're not even factoring it in. Yeah. They're pointless. Teams go and they grind out wins and whatever else, and then they get like a six seed. It's declining every year. We talk about it every single year when it gets to March. You should go lose on purpose on Tuesday mm. if you know you're in. There's no, no benefit to winning those games. None. It's never reflected in seeding, which is a horrendous job from the committee. It infuriates me. Who seeded this tournament? Going back to the days on radio. We don't have any clue how this year's conference tournaments will impact things because we've never seen it. Well, are you better off being a team who doesn't even make it, sitting there, didn't earn the right to lose that game, and the team that loses gets punished and you get rewarded? Oh, that's going to that's gonna suck if it happens. It might. Hmm. it shouldn't it shouldn't there's no there's no way you should be able to get in if you're sitting at home over a team who who has earned the right to be in that game i'm I'm not going to get preemptively mad about something that hasn't happened yet but you can 
you can picture it. I, yeah, I <clears throat> I was thinking like if they redo it because the of no divisions, like those teams should both be in the playoff. Who Indiana and Penn State? No, the two teams that make the Big Ten title Oregon game and, and, Ohio State, and the they, SEC title game. Right. Because in the SEC, there's even more teams that are going to be affected. Right. We'll get to – you know what we always – SEC is going to take a backseat to because you mentioned the ACC. Let's talk, about, let's talk ACC right now. Okay. Miami was down 28-17 to 17 in the third quarter. They went on a quick 36-3 run and, and got the trip to cover town. Ward does so many things that are just outrageous. Mm -hmm. um, I thought Duke looked awesome, and then they didn't, mm -hmm. and it happened so fast that Oregon has the ability to score on you in a hurry. Ohio State does too, although they haven't done it a lot lately. No, but when the thing about Miami is that they, I feel like as much as anyone. They can score on you in three plays, seventy-five yards in tw twenty-eight seconds because of him. him. He's he's unbelievable. Totally agree. What he is like taken on upon like <clears throat> I heard Chris Ball say, you know, we wanted to get a guy that we knew we were going to Florida. We needed a guy that was going to go win there. He's winning you a hell of a lot more games than just that first one. But you saw his capability in that game, and he is. He is, and the other thing, like we talked about, it, I think we did a clip on it too. Like he's the worst guy to bet against in college football. You can't get him on the ground. You he makes throws where you're like, no way, yes way, it's completed, yep. and they're 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 just gut punches. They're third downs. They're second and longs. They're touchdowns from outside the red zone, inside the red zone. Like every single facet, he is absolutely fantastic agreed he's a blast to watch and you're never out of it with him no and if you're in it you're maybe not really in it because duke was in it and then they were really not in it at all what i what i said before that game um when asked i i wanted to i don't know if miami was is capable to win a conference game 41 to 10 but you still got to beat them you know what I mean? Like, I wanted to see everybody else rally around. I want to see the defense play better. I want to see the offensive line be more consistent and not have him not have to bail them out on things. And then you saw another version of him bailing them out today, down double digits in the second half. What's that? That's three times already. Yeah. And Virginia the, Tech, Cal, in this game. And the Louisville game was a tie oh. game in the fourth quarter. And, I mean, Louisville gift-wrapped a touchdown. And they're when because they're, of a fumble when, in the end zone. When yeah. they were on their own, like, two-yard line in that game at home. And that that Louisville game was interesting. I took Louisville and winners because I'm like, that's just too many points. And this is the first team Clemson's played with a pulse since Georgia. Nailed it. Well, I yes, I I, I end up being right. Louisville impressed the hell out of me because they went in, they beat Clemson, and it it looks it didn't look as bad as it was. Louisville was way better than Clemson oh, yeah. in this game, way better. And I guess, I mean, I. You and I both, but I think me louder than than you maybe. I'm like, hey, Clemson, dangerous, awesome. The, the thing I didn't keep in mind is that they hadn't played anybody that was in the same zip code as them talent-wise. Mm -hmm. Well, they did today on their own home field. At night. And got trucked. I love Jeff Brom. I absolutely love that guy. What a play caller. Oh. What like, a, well, that's that's, an, that's, an, that's that's high level stuff, man. People don't go in there and beat him like that. Oh, ever. I can't remember it. Jameis did it. I was there. That's the only reason I remember. They beat him by a lot. They beat it was. I think they put fifty up on him. But I remember Silo and I. We were out of there at halftime. Red Sox were in the World Series, dude. Uh, it, SMU. Yes, gave them two. No big deal. Favorite. Who oh, no. know? Pitt's unbeaten. They looked. I mean, th their most recent game was they were they were uh, beating the crap out of Syracuse. It's a uh, great call by you because SMU could not have looked worse than they did last week against, and they freaking won correct. throwing the ball over six times. Yeah, and, and all anyone saw was Pitt returning picks for touchdowns. I ended up getting five over Syracuse, and they were rolling. They were Thursday night. They had the extra time. Had to battle the quarterback. 
their offense is really dynamic mm. and and multiple. SMU. Yes. Yeah. And they ran it. They gashed Pitt. Um, shout to the big rig. We gave him a shout in winners. Did you? He's nice. very excited about that. <laughs> Thank you, ponies. Uh, they're. I don't know who they play next. I don't know where they are in the standings because I don't. Now with Clemson losing, I don't know what that's going to mean. Setting up for SMU Miami. Look, we've talked about this. I I don't know if we talked about it here or just flying on the plane somewhere. SMU of all these, in in this NIL era, <laughs> they'll pull their wallet out. And let me tell you, buddy, <laughs> they don't have. They ain't got any leather. And they got a rubber band <laughs> around a wad of cash. All right, and they're in Dallas. And they got the they got the gate codes to the correct communities down there. That's a that's a scary group. If you want to go, you want to go dollar for dollar. SMU's not going to get outspent by too many people. We talk about our guy Troy Aikman a lot. How much we think of him, respect him, love him. He's all right. He goes that he's an SMU season ticket holder. He's all in on the ponies. That's a hard man to impress, and they have, and they got him. He was in the building tonight. Well, we could leave early because that was I – don't, I don't know what the final was. I'm, I keep waiting for it to go by. I just know – I know it was by yeah. enough. Well, I think Pitt got to 11. Well, they scored again maybe, but, I mean, SMU's number was started with a four, maybe a five. 40, oh, wow, 48-25. That's the final? Yep. Let's see, 23-7. We're okay. Um, I don't I, – SMU – I don't know who they play next. Their one loss is to unbeaten BYU. Yeah, which gets better every week. Okay, what, what about SMU? Well, like, are they, where, where, they got to be in the, we're talking about them. They only lost to, only losses to an unbeaten team. I'm just saying, just like, just this is, we begin the conversation about people that are in the mix and how many people are, are in the mix. Are you, does the, does the, Fantasy game of what Vegas would make the point spread between teams interest you? Yes. Okay. I, I me too. And it, I think it, it I think always, we gotta do it. It always has. And the the counter to that, you're not wrong, is well then then just let Vegas be the tournament committee. And that that's we don't need that. No. It's just context. It's a data point. It's information that that I think you can you could dismiss it. I think to do so, in my opinion, would be idiotic. Why would you dismiss that information? Mm -hmm. The place whose business it is to, to, to know what to do, except when it comes to Indiana. When they just want to go, no, here, how much money do you want to win on the Hoosiers? Um, yeah, how, who'd be favored matters. Uh, Saban called Kevin Jennings the most underrated player in the country today, and that's, you're getting that kind of praise from that man. Oof. I loved what he said about the. Ohio, I mean, I don't want to go back to Ohio State, Penn State. I just love the line he said about: "Do you want to be? Do you want to be the team that feels the pressure? Do you want to be the team that imposes the, the exerts the pressure?" And I'm like, I bet when that dude talked in the room, it, I, so I, good. I bet I bet people responded well to it. Um, he also had a. Did you hear his one about the fans? When he said, "You know how many snaps these fans are playing? Zero. <laughs> yeah, they can help up to a point. Go out and dominate. They can help, right? They can help up to a point. Um, all right, I didn't. So now I feel like I'm all, and I'm a jumbled mess. No, anything I, left in the ACC? I don't. Well, Miami, impressive. Cam, insane. Clemson, Clemson. got trucked. SMU, SMU as advertised at home. What we thought, most underrated player in the country. Pretty, thanks. pretty good stuff. Uh, thanks. Nice comeback, Syracuse. Also in winners. I think it's a lot of on the field when it's like when I'm right, it's just going to be right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so will you go to the SEC? Yes. I want to talk about a team that lost. The Florida Gators. Yes. Man, they battled their butt oh. off. And, and I'm not going to do the flagway get done, get hurt, they win. No. I'm not saying no. that. Just what you watched. They battle oh. their tails off man that defense was absolutely spectacular and i wanted as i'm watching this i'm thinking beck's got to be better and i think two things can be true he's got to be better but that gator defense played as as well as as they possibly could play and, and i'm crushed for them because they could have should have 
probably shoulda. If they don't, if they Tennessee? don't, yeah, yeah. If they don't lose my guy uh, Mertz in, yeah. in Tennessee, it's ten nothing when he gets hurt. They probably win. They also screw up the field goal at the end of the first half. Like a, if they don't lose, if they don't lose Lagway today, I don't know. But with respect, the guy was like a Yale transfer, wasn't he? Warner, yeah. I mean, and they tied it. I know. It's twenty apiece. Go ahead. I, I'm the one talking. What? 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 I mean, uh, what? What do you got for me on the Gators today? Okay, so all off season, mm -hmm. all we talked about schedule. Yes, right. And now they're in that part. It started today, mm -hmm. and look how impressive they were. You've talked about it. Battled their asses off. No one gave them a chance, and they're sitting there up winning. And things are going. Lagway's making splash plays, is what he does. He, which is his fourth career start, and they're in it. The defense has played better and better and better. And you go back to what they look like against Miami. Then the A and M game with the weather delay, the state. No one's in the stadium. A and M wins by double digits, and it's like this is this they, is bad. Everyone wanted him fired, and they that night get up off the deck. Yep, and they win, and then they go to Tennessee and fight. They bury Kentucky, who battled Tennessee tonight. It's it's gonna get bad because they're not gonna be able to do it offensively now, and they should not get rid of him. We agree. We this goes all the way back to the summer when I yeah. said when I said don't do what Florida State did. No, do it, Florida no, State. Don't do what did. Florida State. Sorry, you gotta you gotta. Although I was talking about Norvell and and what he did, I I meant before this year. I really I think. I never know with college football fans because they do dumb shit. And now with money, it's going to only get dumber and more impulsive. I would think, and I live with one, it's a, that Gator fans would say about today's effort, particularly you're on your third quarterback, and it's a 2020 game. What else could they reasonably have been asked to do today? Mm -hmm. I don't reasonably asked to do. I hope they I hope they take a deep breath and go, you know what? What did I say in the summer? I said you could show improvement, but your record won't. Correct. I saw that today. Ready? Lost to Georgia. Yep. At Texas. With the guy from Yale. LSU comes in. Dude threw his shoe one time. Ole Miss comes in. Their wrong. quarterback had as many touchdowns as incompletions today. Yeah, he went out on Halloween, too. Well, how's that going? I bet, in Oxford, I bet it went well. I bet it went well. <laughs> Hotty toddy. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Uh, going back to Beck, you said he had to be better. He was. He was when it, when it mattered. Correct. When it mattered. And, uh, man, they go to Ole Miss next week. That's Let's talk about one. Ole Miss today because let me tell you something. Hand couldn't, up. Couldn't be more wrong. Right here. Couldn't be more wrong? Oh, yes, you could. I had the under. Oh. I had Arkansas. Well, <laughs> I had under and one team went over by themselves. <laughs> um, I kind of gave away the headline. I mean, you already know it. Dart had... 515 15, yeah. had as many touchdowns, six, as incompletions. Oof. And this is an Arkansas team that on that field against Tennessee, whose offense isn't quite like Ole Miss's, beat them. Well, yeah. they didn't win today. It, Ole Miss just, they got Georgia coming in next week and felt like the kind of sleepy spot where you could get caught yeah. looking down the road. Or you could drop sixty some odd. That was uh, that was a show. Yeah, that's a great job by Lane Kiffin because last week they looked like crap coming off a bye against Oklahoma, who's not a good team but still going to battle you with their defense. Right. And Ole Miss took a lot of punches last week, a lot, and it didn't look pretty. And uh, they come out and go on the road. That's two. I mean, you look at what they did. And we're going to talk about South Carolina. What Ole Miss did when they went to South Carolina, and then they go to Fayetteville. 
Ole Miss teams in the past didn't do that. That's that's a great point. And the, and the, and the, and now they didn't, they weren't, ha- weren't always resilient. Correct. I, I didn't and mean to cut you off. Sorry. And no. And now they have the two losses. They're out of Mulligans, and you got to see, you know what they what they were man. They didn't even have Trey Harris. He's the best receiver maybe in the league. I know, and I'm trying to. I saw some one of their guys had like eight for two fifty four. Yeah, eleven. Yeah, whatever. He had a day. We'll get to South Carolina. I want to squeeze in a Vandy for the first time since 1955. They beat both Alabama teams. They champs. They champs of Alabama. Print the shirts. Third down conversions in the game were six of 29. Vanderbilt had 227 yards of offense, went into Jordan Hare down in the loveliest village in the Plains and beat the offensive genius Hugh Freeze. Auburn needs to win out to go to a bowl game. They're not. No. No. They are not. Uh, I'm gonna. Well, I'm not gonna leave the SEC, but I'm, I have a question for you. Lincoln Riley, year three in USC. Hugh Freeze, year two in Auburn. Do you think either program moves off their guy? No. I think you're right because I think if your USC is, where do you go? You can't you can't introduce a guy and say you've changed the landscape of college football uh and punt. And if you're Auburn, well, you've done this before a lot. And I think you just have to take a deep breath and hang on and and just suck it up. You can't start over again. Yeah. No, I think they're two different situations. I, Completely. I, but, 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 no, but, no, no, but you no, know no. what I'm talking about. Yes, there, there's there's a conversation to be had about both. Mm-hmm. And I can't stand how I'm going to sound like now because I sound like an SC apologist. They're in every game. I love Miller Moss. Yeah, he battles. He's his- got so much Nussmeyer in him where he just can't stop throwing it to the other team. He did. He and, did throw it to purple tonight a few times. But again, what's it? His eighth career start? Like, we know. are in this day and age, and, you know, right now the whole week has been to talk in the NFL is to talk about Anthony Richardson, right? Yeah. Go back to his career starts. Not a lot. You got to, these guys got to play. You got to, and it sucks because you're trying to make moves and, and establish something. Uh, while these guys are taking their lumps as starters, but, but you got to see what you have. I agree. It's just a really tough look because um, Riley, you know, he got, she gets short with reporters. Oh. That's just, it's a little bit, it's like it comes off like a spoiled kid, man. Come off like, you know, and it's been kind to of me. I've enjoyed talking to him. I would just say with respect, you could be better than than you are in these moments when you're like lecturing people about the questions and you're not going to let anybody come to practice. It's not anyone's fault but your team's and yours that you're four and five. It's your situation to fix. That's your job. So, you know, can't get pissed off. The, the people asking the questions, that's their job. Yeah. And they're not doing anything wrong. Uh, and at four and five, you know, after we were told that the that changed the landscape of college football – one of the biggest moves in the history of the game. Mm. Four and five ain't it. Cowherd, though, said they do lead the country in close road losses. <laughs> so he's always got something to say about SC when the in game. In a positive manner. Uh, hey, man, I respect it. It know? was. Uh, Sell sunshine, baby. Easy to do out there in Southern I, California. I just want to touch on Jed Fish. That guy could fucking coach. I, mean, I agree. I, and Rod- I, Rogers battle. They, 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 their defense, man. I, I had them last week against Indiana, and they had a goal line stand at the end of the first half. They had a fourth and they, they had a goal line stand to hold on to a five point lead, and they, they get a turnover when SC's trying to go up eight, and they turned and they turned SC over. No, they didn't get a pick. They got a stop inside the red zone late. There, that defense. They lost a ton of dudes to the NFL off their off their uh, championship team. Last year, I mean championship game. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. When he gets his dudes in there, they're gonna, uh, they're they'll be good again. I was just impressed that they bent. SC ran it a lot oh. on him, but then when they got down there yeah. to try to take the lead, they they couldn't get in. 
Back to the uh, SEC. Because you know what was going to happen. SEC was going to score, and they were going to go for two. I'm well you, aware. <laughs> you were getting two and a half? Math isn't my uh, strong suit, but I was like, this is really going to happen, huh? And we're going <laughs> we're gonna to be squeezing the old butt cheeks together and praying, holding on, tense, tense times. Um, man, I don't want to keep saying I gave him it. Sometimes you have clarity. South Carolina at home tonight against number 10 a and <sighs> You just Man. you could feel it, and not and you're not always right. I mean, last year, last week, we both liked UCF. You could feel it. No, you can't. Should have had him today. Yeah, right. They, that, we were, Jesus. Yeah, Arizona's been a disaster this oh. year. Uh, that place at night, they had it, it felt like the LSU game script. They jumped them. They're up fourteen nothing, and then they're behind. A and M. Caught, got their second win, standing eight count, got their wits about them. And uh, they had the lead 20 to 17. South Carolina ties them right before the half. Which could have gone the other way. It looked like a uh, fumble. That was big. That was, I agree with that. And it's also big because they've, they've, missed, they've missed some kicks. Um, Both the kickers in that game are really good. They missed the kick against LSU, which is why they lost. I think it was a different kid. You're right. Okay. But they like Penn State change kickers. I mean, people, hmm. Arizona State's just trying out dudes. <laughs> hey, if you can kick, you know. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, but then the second half, they were excellent. And shut out. We saw that South Carolina game at uh, Bama where they fought their butts off. And you you don't know if that's, is that it? Like, they did they run out of ammo? And the hmm. answer is no. Since then, they've, Beat Oklahoma by a bunch out in Norman. Now they get this win. Uh, that's a, that's a significant win for that for that uh, squad. Best five and three team in the country, and they're pretty youthful. Well, they got a lot. Of, they got a ton of youth on the uh, on that quarterback. Pass, pass the quarterback right. gets better and better too. He's got some gears. I agree with that. Who they get? couldn't get him on the ground. No, he's a big man. And A and M's got some. Ultra beasts on the defensive line. They really do. I mean, they just kept coming. Uh, tough uh, loss losing Moss. I, I was impressed with both teams, and I know it got out of hand late uh -huh. with the turnovers, but Reed took a step as a starter to me, battling back at 14 nothing. That place, they don't care what color T-shirts they wear. It's going to be a zoo there at Willie B at night games. It's awesome. Going back to the old days, and I'm talking the old days, like George Rogers when it was a turf field, and the line about it was, if it ain't swaying, we ain't playing. Mm. Like, it used to move. They might have shored up the concrete. I don't know. Back in the, back in the day, like, people just, it was, we were willy-nilly with stuff. You could smoke in planes. Think about that. Harry Switzer smoked on the sidelines. <laughs> But think about how dumb it is to be able to smoke. Oh, I'm you're in the no sec no smoking section on a plane. If anyone smokes, we're all in the smoking section. You'd ride in the back seat of a station wagon. There were no seat belts of any kind. You were just like a human projectile if there was a wreck. So my point is if the stadium was swaying and the concrete had cracks in it, people were like, ah, we'll be all right. Uh Willie B was they were cooking tonight. I just, I just remembered what somebody told me on Halloween night at Steak Hall. Just remind me at the end, please. Okay. It's unbelievable. Don't let us forget Oscar. Halloween, uh. Steak College. Um, should we get into the Big 12 mayhem? I got my Colorado action looking good. I didn't even think about that. How about, yeah. how, how about you? Who's got clarity? I thought Iowa State was going to pull another one out of the fire. I was watching it. They hit a big ass third down touchdown. I'm like, it's raining and Ames. That and, end of the game was nuts. And they're going to win again. They beat Iowa. They beat UCF. They're going to beat Texas Tech. And I'm thinking, give them credit for winning. But man, you don't want to keep winning like this. And then Texas Tech, I believe it was a 12 play drive in like a minute 21. Taj Brooks had 120, 20, 122 rather on the ground. They're running back touchdown. They win on the road. Big, big, big win, which means the last unbeaten in that league is, B is BYU. Kansas State with a gross loss to Houston. Yeah. Really gross. 
Houston, I want to say, had like 10 first downs. Hmm. Not a lot. They're playing better of late. Coach Fritz is going to be do a nice job. Already is. I was going to say. Be, They're the most improved team in the country to me. From early this they year. They were awful. Yes. That's you're right. Awful. Saying he's going to do a good job suggests he isn't already. They're like four and five. I think they've won four in a row. It's happening. But that's still a that's not a loss you can afford to have when you're ahead by nine in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Great teams figure out how to win that game. You want to be in the playoff discussion, you want to get in the gotta win. Gotta win that game. And they didn't. Um, so Kansas State and Iowa State both lose. Texas Tech's sneaky. Got just let me let me do this because I, I was texting Reese about it. We were talking about the game. Their resume is so fucked up. Who? Texas Tech. Here you go. Start the year. They have three losses. Start the year. Yep. They beat Abilene Christian 52 51 in overtime. I'm well aware. Go to Wazoo, get blasted. Yep. They blast North Texas. They beat Arizona State. Mm -hmm. They beat Cincinnati. Good football team. Yep. They beat Arizona by six. Adam. Winners. They got beat by Baylor, who didn't have a conference win by 24. It happens. Come back, lose to TCU 35 34. And now they go to Ames. And win by one. That makes no sense. That's kind of the Big 12 in a nutshell. It is. It's crazy. Why? I remember Oklahoma State was ranked at the beginning of the year. They're winless in the league. 0 and 6. That's worse than Florida State, who finished up their ACC season this year at 1 and 7. They don't play any more ACC no. games? Who do they play? They have like uh, Florida, Notre Dame, Bethune Cookman. Yeah, that sounds Maybe. right. Yeah, Somebody in Florida. In Florida. Wow. I, mean, so. I like them today at home against Carolina. They were not the right side. Tied with Stanford. You guys gave up a few today in, in Raleigh. Got ugly. They took our quarterback out bad. You guys gave up 59, I believe it was. NC State. Yeah. Uh, at Syracuse, at Clemson, at NC State. That was the half of the road schedule in the conference. The Oregon Ducks had one of the more disgusting <laughs> covers you'll ever see. I miss it, and I can't wait to see it. I mean, it's it's bad beats worthy. Michigan's down by 14. Mm. They, they drive down inside the 10, don't score, and now it's just run out the clock mode, except Oregon doesn't. They hit a long one. The clock's running. There's 28 seconds. They're on the two. Could take knees. They do not. Touchdown, play the fight song, cover town. That's irrelevant to just sort of the domination of the game. Oregon had 300 at the half, 28 at the half, 15 to 5 first downs at the half. Michigan's not a good football team this year. They're not terrible. They're just not, they're just, they're whatever. They're double digit dogs at Indiana next week. Mm -hmm. uh, but Oregon, Oregon, they're playing like what they are, which is, the best team in the league. They beat Ohio State. Um, so I think Dirty Terps go out to Eugene next week. I am. I mean, I don't know. Coming off a of bye. I don't, whatever, man. <laughs> What's the name of that song they play with at the, I'm Coming Home? Yeah, Matt Kearney. Oh, that's so awesome! It's so good. We were supposed—I was supposed to go. I was—it couldn't. It, we were supposed to go. The, told the gang, told the fam, we were going to go to Eugene, going to connect with my guy Neil Everett. Mm. Travel issues, unfortunately, prevented it. But I, I just wanted to be there when they sing that. Oh, it's so good! It's just—I've watched videos of it. Yeah, hey, I sent it to you. Yeah, but there's there's I, there's so many oh, videos in like stadium. in the stadium. Oh, it's incredible! Like the last uh, is it. I'm go going home or coming home. I I, I think I'm getting You're it going home. home. Matt Kearney. Yeah, it's what a song, what a cool thing. I've been to Oregon, but I'm imagining like if you're from there, how how connected you are to the idea of being from there. And you know, my guy Neil, who I adore, one of the great humans on earth. Like he's a duck, and I was just thinking that'd be cool. All right, probably on the wrong end of a big number. 
but you go and you'd see it and whatever. I'll watch it on the tube. Uh, but ducks, that last one was gross. Dan Lanning, 9 0. Yep. And, Cover. Huh? Cover. All right. They know. Of course they do. Okay. Keep the alums. The alums, you know, Jalam, you know, you just, it, it's just not good coaches win, great coaches. Yeah. Uh, who else is on my sheet? I don't know. Am I, are we missing anybody? Tennessee game, they won. Their offense is not good. They had a bunch of yards and completions, but I know no, they missed no they points. missed kicks. They turned the ball over. That's their issue. I think if they ever clean stuff up and just stop turning the football over, they uh I don't know. I mean they've demonstrated it. Who do they who do they have left on their schedule? Oh. Tennessee. Georgia. Athens? Bandy. Yeah, Athens. Bandy. And Bandy's bowl eligible, by the way. People still saying that Alabama was that was a bad loss when they lost to Vandy. I think Q Freeze has nightmares of Pavia. Good God, came in and got him last year with uh, New Mexico State, and he beat him the year before when he was at Liberty. It's their only loss. Yeah, like, and New Mexico State was bad. Well, Pavia's they had two hundred twenty-seven yards of offense today. Vandy they are did. cover machine. They're they're tough. They're a tough football team. Mississippi State at Tennessee, Tennessee at Georgia. They played UMass today. <laughs> they was, were down. The first score I saw from Oklahoma was Maine seven to nothing, <laughs> and I was imagining the people in Norman. They ended up winning by quite a few, but I'm imagining there was some early grumbling in Norman. There weren't a lot of people there. Noon, like I, is that eleven a.m.? Eleven a.m. Norman. Hey, black bears from Maine coming in. I don't know how many of my. Dear friends in Miami, we're making the trip to Norman for that 11 a.m. <laughs> kick with the Black Bears. Good gaggly goo. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting things. There's so much stuff that happens. Oh, uh, what do we do? We know anything about Army? Daly didn't play. Their quarterback. Yeah, they just said undisclosed. Uh, Thamel had that on game day. There's, they won. They cover? No. Uh, their running back Kanye Udo played well. They got Notre Dame in three weeks. They still haven't trailed. Indiana did today. Correct. So now they're the only team. Indiana trailed 10 nothing. Stanford Steven Scott, like Told you. Worse. You just listen to us. You're not they're not free every week, everybody. <laughs> hey. Hey, dumbass. How about 47 in your eye hole? Yeah. Um, tell us the story about State College. Oh, God. So Trick or treat for an hour with the girls. Our service up to State College. And boy, let me tell you. I finally figured it out after talking to people that also did the drive. Mm -hmm. And then I did the drive home today. My driver, I believe, had no tolls into the Google Maps. Because we were on road, Scott. Like, I didn't. We Wil weren't. Wilkes Bear. We weren't on a highway for the last 100 miles. And I know it's in the middle of nowhere. But the way we went, I, like, I, I can't go back. I mean, I could look at a map. And, but, like, I'm talking about sidewinding around for miles and miles and miles. Uh, so we get there. It's Halloween night. Starving. Haven't eaten. Uh, Plaza, Mexico, across the street from the hotel. That's a good 945. one. 9.45, I'm like, please, I just want a couple tacos. How's, how's the Mexican in Central PA at 9.45 on Halloween? Excellent. Love Ground it. beef tacos, simple, giving me, makes me, guy came over with the thing, made me some spicy and limey guacamole. Okay. Tremendous. All right. <clears throat> so I said, got a couple of the boys together. I said, we got to just check out the scene. Big Red? Big Red's out. Uh, Bruce Feldman. Yeah, I love it. So I said, uh, guy at Champs reached out. Champs is the spot on campus. That's the place. Okay. Text me. Come in the back door. See the wreckage. Halloween night Halloween in State now College. In State College. And I walk in. I mean, you got Pittsburgh. You got Philly. You got Jersey. Like, there was a guy who put together a Philadelphia, like, 
athlete costume. It was one of the worst things I've ever seen. It's like Eagles hat, Iverson jersey underneath, Mike Schmidt baby blue on top. Wrecked. Wrecked. Yeah, definitely a, got a dip that has bleeded no, into vape. the top. No, vape, dude. You got to vape. Everyone vapes. Do it's they? unbelievable. We would go downstairs. We had they had a little uh, speakeasy. And they have bottle service at this place. I'm like, no, I don't need the bottle service at Champs at Halloween night. Okay, little speakeasy. We've placed all to ourselves. We're good. And you just hear and see the wreckage outside. Then they're like, all right, there's a there's an underground bar too. You want to go down there? And we've got a DJ tonight. Big. I think his name is Kurt Miller. Never heard of him. So we're down there. Why you gotta go, with Kurt Miller? I I, I just think that's heard what his name. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not. My DJ knowledge is not great. Understood. Avicii is he a DJ? Passed away. Rest in peace. Did he? Oh, I'm sorry. R.I.P. He had some hits. God bless. Him. A lot of hits. Um, so we're down there, and you know, you start getting the eyeballs, and I'm like, oh god, here we go. He's so, super famous. So, <laughs> not at all. So these three guys come over. We get a picture. Yeah. And the kid, he's got like lip ring and he's looking at me. And he's like, hot bourbon breath. Oh, sweating. Hey. White t shirt on. Hey. Oh, it's just bad. Chest hair coming out. About, uh, he was probably about 5'11, 240. <laughs> and he looks at me and he's, he's probably been going since two o'clock okay and he looks at me and he points at me and he goes scott that one big thing you did on your dog it makes me cry still to this day <laughs> I, I hope i hope you just I, gave him a pat and said i just looked up thanks buddy i tapped him on the shoulder and i said buddy i want you to have a great night and i don't want to ruin your night but that wasn't me and I just walked away, walked upstairs, got in the Uber, <laughs> and I just... I, that guy, I man, probably an asshole. <laughs> you know that's what he said. <laughs> hey. Oh, I, I, oh man. Wow. Just couldn't stop laughing. That's I was I went back to the that's hotel a, that's, that's a and I'm one. laying in bed and I'm just it's like I don't know twelve thirty one I'm like I can't call you I'm like this I I just and I'm just I have his, his face staring right at me but he's staring right through me right because there's Cause nobody home he was eating Red Bull and vodkas for probably twelve hours uh try to dirty Sprite I guess that's a thing there okay those are scary. Delish. What you can't what, like, what I is saw it? her make it. What is I'm, it? It's just a lot of booze and it tastes like a fruity soda. Ooh, that's problematic. And I'm I'm like, all right. I'm seeing it just choo, 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 pouring. And I'm like, all right. And then you swish it around. You can't taste the booze in it. That's 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 no good. Went down then, and I said, I'll have one more. Because the next thing you know, you're, that you're was it. the guy that goes up to a guy and starts talking about segments he did on a show that <laughs> he didn't do. Wasn't me. Oh, man. But just wreckage, man. We were, oh, 30 minutes. We got, I think we got it. I'm like, that was perfect. I just wanted to see it. I was, I was, at, I was in Tuscaloosa once on, uh, on Halloween doing a, a, doing a piece for game day the year i was doing it and we i went to innisfree and it, oh. and i was at innisfree on halloween for Rip. approximately 10 minutes and it was like taxi <laughs> like i this ain't for your boy uh mm. there was a time when it would be like, let's go but now let's go is yeah i just wanted to see it it's yeah, been, it time been a go. while time to go but the energy yeah of a college campus on halloween night oh there's my god we nothing. talked about it last week nothing it's spectacular nothing. um not a lot of clothes as we described the the the, the ladies it's hey 
Do your thing. Enjoy really? the night. It's your choice. Um, this is tricky because I don't want to. I just, in general, in general, the line that Tyson had about how social media has made people way too comfortable being disrespectful to other people because they don't get punched in the face. Mm-hmm. Like the bozo that's talking crap to Kelsey today that got his phone smashed. Like, Kelsey's such a good dude. Best. And I, I, I traded text with him. I, I'm sure he'll speak and say what, how he feels about it. Well, and I, that's, that's for him to say. But I know that in general, with the benefit of hindsight, you're like, there's a different, there's a different way to go. But the stuff that dude said, and I'm, I said this last week, the Penn State people I've encountered in my life, I've liked them all. There, there, there are a ton of people from around here that go there, and they're just like us. They just went there instead of where I went. And I don't, I'm not going to put this on Penn State. This kid had a Penn State hoodie on that's mm-hmm. doing that. But I would just say in general, whoever you are, young people, I presume it's probably younger more than older. You, you can't be that dude. You just can't be that guy. Mm. You're calling him his last name, which is disrespectful, because you don't know him. And you're saying things that are just outright disrespectful. And you get your reaction, and you get your 15 minutes. But that's just bullshit. And it's a chicken shit way to act in general. And at some point in your life, someone is not going to smash your phone. They're going to smash your jaw if that's how you act. So just figure it out and be better than that because it's just no way to behave. And I've said this about social media. Largely, that's how people act on social media because there are no consequences. This dude chose to act that way a foot and a half away from a a grown man who chose to, 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 to say, Hey, how about how about we stop this recording with what he did? I just I don't chalk that up to Penn State because that was just a guy. It could have been anywhere, but in general, if, if it's a tweet you want to send or you want to heckle, ha- harass somebody, and hassle somebody on your phone, stop acting like that because it's just complete chicken shit behavior. That's all I got on that. Yeah, I I didn't get it after he did the kick. I did I didn't see uh, Jason, so I I wasn't there around it. Uh, I'll just say we got to be better, everybody, because being on the sidelines for that game and hearing the shit that people yell at players, coaches, and refs, this is your own team you're yelling at. It, it's not great, not great. And and I, James, somebody got into it with James. I don't know why this, my mic just keeps falling down like this. Somebody got into it with James afterwards, and I, I think we all understand the frustration of of, of that. We talked yeah, about man, it at the like, top. No, but you're right. And, and the, the thing is, the thing, it, and I mean, as far as that is that that young dude with Kelsey, like there's just con- actions have consequences, man. Um, but a lot of the stuff that gets said, there are no consequences, oh, and it's man. just I'm just imagine being those those dudes from from. Penn State, you know, you, you're Charlie Brown running up to kick the football again, and so it's it's a rough Saturday. But it, it wasn't a disqualifying loss. No, I, and that's in that like you see, you, as a fan, you want your team to win, and you you've been there so many times, and they haven't been able to like. But think about the guys that are putting the time in to try and overcome that. Like that's that's where we lose the realness of it you know like Mm -hmm. you're you're away you don't know what's going on you don't know how they're prepping you trust me they're trying their best you know and and again that's that's why i think the penn state thing is so tough for people because when they've gotten to these places they haven't played their best and yeah it's on them but they're damn trying man you know like it's 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 losing sucks it sucks but somebody loses Every game, you know, and Ryan Day won, which means the people at Ohio State that are mad at him, hmm. 
That's a tough, that's a tough, tough spot, man, where winning a title is the only thing you can do that will that's make it. that'll make your think about that. That and that's a fact. That's a fact. That that's the only satisfying result. You think they're good enough to win a title? I do. I so, I do because I think Howard doesn't fumble. Um that 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 feels like a game that could get away from from Penn State. And I know you can't take away the fumble and the last play against Oregon. He's been damn good, man. I agree. And like when and I wondered about it. You know, because so they, got, I, they got all the other pieces, and I watch, and I, 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 I say it all the time, and it's my fault. But when I think about him, I can remember last year we were at Red River, Kansas State goes to Oklahoma State on a Thursday night, and he was bad, bad, and that's the game that stuck out to me. And the whole off season, I'm like, that, that's, the, and I'm like, you shouldn't do that. The kid won a Big Twelve title the year before and beat an undefeated TCU team, and now to see him. Like, I gained so much respect for him. He comes, like, he talked about this. I, I can't wait. I'm so excited. I rooted for Penn State. They told me I wasn't good enough. His first pass, he throws a pick six, and the crowd's into it. And they, they come didn't blink. right back down. Didn't blink. Two straight touchdown <clears throat> drives. I think the response <clears throat> in that environment is is why Nick. I believe they can. And I, th- and I felt like they responded in, in Autzen, which is as good an environment as there is in the sport so, I mean, you played two road games against top three teams. You lost one by one and you won this one. I mean, there aren't many people that have, that have had to been, had to dive in the deep end like that. And they, they have, uh, and they're one and one. I, I, you don't do this during games because you're there and you're smarter than I am. I, I'm sitting on the couch. You, I'm consuming it. Some of it's on social media. And, you know, when he fumbles out of bounds, the people that are going to just decide to live tweet everything and act like what just happened is their first line in their obituary. Well, that's what you get when you spend money on all that money and Will Howard's your quarterback. <laughs> okay. Cool. I mean, Put the phone dude, down and watch the game for 10 go. minutes. You know? there, there you go. I, I, think, I think he's a tough – I think he's tough – in terms of the people who are in the portal, is he Cam Ward? No, there was one Cam Ward. He went to Miami. Mm-hmm. Sorry, we didn't get him. We got this guy. Is he is he good enough? It, if they don't win a title, I don't believe it'll be like, well, it's because our quarterback isn't good enough. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes you just lose games. I think the game they lost at Oregon, they just lost the game. I don't feel like he was the reason why. In the end, there's one play, and you can get... Fine, uh, fine. So in the, now I'm rambling. Yes, I think I think I absolutely believe that that they could. I absolutely think that they learned a lot about themselves in those two road games. I'll tell you that, and that's scary for the opposition because not a lot of teams have gone and done that this year. When we're talking about teams, like what's your win? What like that's the stuff I look at when you find out about yourself because that group obviously gets all this scrutiny. Because of, you know, the money involved. But to be able to go do that with that group, like that's why that that emotion after the game was genuine. And let me tell you, Chip Kelly and Ryan Daly, Ryan Day are not really emotional guys. They were today. Heck yeah. That's why I started with that. The way they reacted tells you that you are, they are that game for you, whoever you are, every time. It's rare that that you're that game for them. That's that's what today was. Mm. Speaking of going on the road, next week, Georgia, who's been to Tuscaloosa and Austin, goes to Oxford. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> Kirby will get them fired up and convinced that everybody thinks they suck. And Bama, who has been to Knoxville, did not get the win in Neyland. They will go down to BR. And so will game day, which means... As always, <laughs> shout out to Gretna, shout out to Brandon, Lowell Velvet, and all the folks in BR. Let's roll out that red carpet because the big man is coming through. We coming. I cannot wait. And I try and tell people, and especially this past week, and I'm like, you're not even in their tier. 
Okay. And that's not that's not to be disrespectful to you. It's just you don't get what those that place is. No. You don't. True. But I'm coming. You know what's cool that I appreciate is so often this year, the words I cannot wait have come out of your mouth. And that's really cool that these places, and they're places that we're lucky because we know people, we got, we got, whether they're professional acquaintances or people that are friends, we got folks. And, and when this gig allows you to intersect with those folks, that's really a treat. And, uh, that, that place will be unhinged because they know each of them, this is a playoff game. Oh yeah. Yeah. We cannot lose any more games. No, uh, I do want like never be in the Happy Valley. Like their staff, athletic department, like talk, like knowing how to host people, like took such good care of us. Like it was, it was mayhem there. I mean, Halloween weekend, we got both shows there, and it was as crisp as it could be. People coming to buy the office, introducing themselves. Thanks for coming. Like that doesn't happen a lot, and there's a lot on the plate for people for game day. But Penn State was incredible. And that says a lot because that's a gigantic place that isn't, this isn't new to them. Correct. The places that, that, that when you visit that hasn't had you, of course they're going to bend over backwards. But let's just say it's my understanding. I don't go on these shows, but there are, maybe that's not the way it goes at every place where you go all the time because maybe other places sort of feel like they were doing you some favor that, you, that you're there. So for Penn State to be as, yeah. As accommodating and as welcoming. Blown away. That's awesome. Yeah. Really accommodating. We got a lot. <laughs> State College is, is, a, is a, I mean, you talk about B-Town. Basketball arena, beautiful. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they got good stuff there, man. And, and like, a f- I, like, I made a mistake calling, this, this is why I love Penn State, because, like, they have their stuff, right? So I was like, yeah, I think we're offices at the Joyce Center. Joyce Center, what's that? You mean the BJC? Like, sorry, BJC. My bad. Got it. I'm an outsider. You're letting me in. Thank you. You go to the, uh, you go to the creamery. I didn't. What's wrong with you. You go swim. <sighs> nope. No swimming and no ice cream. Hours didn't work out. Yeah, I think. Oh, problem, we had I we got, had plenty of ice cream. You know what happened, y'all? Two dirty sprites. No, not at all. I was ready to go. Then I got an email. Well, if you were here from 4 to 5 a.m. Ledecky hours, dude. The swimmers. I like to go for a swim. I am not a swimmer. Okay? No. Look look at me. The swimmers are there from 4 to 5, Steve. Look at me. Um, but no, this week, it's all I've wanted all year. It was this game. It's my favorite place. Tiger Stadium's the Mecca. Of college football stadiums. Have they said the, what the game time is yet? Yeah. 7.30 Eastern. Oh, and the sun will take its home in the western sky, and it's nighttime in Tiger Stadium. We'll be right at Mr. Landry's tailgate, right outside that gate, watching Georgia Ole Miss, and then walk on in. Walk on in. I see what you did there. Yep. Get yourself a shovel of some pasta lie oh, oh, I'm sick. I'm sick go. with envy right now. I got to go get on the treadmill. I'm sick with envy. You could get down there. Mm, man. I know a guy that's got a plane going. Understood. Got your friends with him. Texans and the Seahawks have games next Saturday morning. And then after the game. Ooh, that's a good point. <laughs> it's, it's only two and a half hour flight. But I get there in time to get a Rafino's, get a little of that redfish oh, on that wood plate. They we got, got brand new, a new, new spot. I open. understand. Supper I understand. club. All right. Well, well, this this is an offline conversation. Just want to get heads up for the people that might. <laughs> so I'm going BR Sunday morning, 6 a.m. flight out of Lafayette to Atlanta to L.A. How's that going to go? Pickled. I'll I'll let you know. <laughs> You'll be in the immortal words of our close friends. He's fine. Thank God you can order an Uber. He's fine before you go to bed. College basketball season starts Monday too. 
Yeah, Duke, uh, Maine. And, and everyone else. Monday, college hoops. Maryland tournament? Yeah. I said it. Did you say it last year? Probably. <laughs> I forgot. That's some loyalty. That's what that is. On the way out, pro or con gaining the hour of sleep? Two-part answer. I know that, and I could tell you the two parts. If this was the newlywed game, I could write down the two parts. Go. Not married, no kids. The best weekend of the year. With kids, maybe one of the worst. And see, this is a guy who is coming off being away. And I let him stay up extra late tonight. Of course. IPads, you just, like, fall asleep with him right on your face. Whatever tonight. you want. Because they don't oh, get. Why? Right. Because they're. It's your body. They're, they're gonna, a human. Yeah, but they're going to be up at the. At, 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 what, time, what time do your kids wake up? To wake up at seven. All right. And the other, Allie, you know what? The older one's out of sleepover. So hey. I'm not worried. She would sleep later than me if she could. But the two younger ones are going to be up at. So what's that going to be? Six? Six. Now, when they get up. Do they immediately begin screaming? Yeah. See, that's unacceptable. They, <laughs> the combination of full speed run down the hallway to my bedroom and the scream yeah. scares the shit out of me every time. And that's not a great way to wake up. How about we have a sit down and say, listen, listen, listen. I've tried. And you know what I get? What? Sorry. I won't do it again. Next morning. You know what you do? You say, hey. I want Aggies. Hey. It's you, know what I'm, you know what I'm sorry about? Your Halloween candy. It's all gone. If you do it again, the Halloween candy. But see, I'm just going to let you all in on a little secret. I'm sure this is going to shock you. I'm not the best at following through with the punishment. Mm. I struggle with that. I struggle with being the bad cop. Do you think if you were a younger dad, you would? I'm afraid that I'm going to be dead soon, and they're going to. I don't want. <laughs> no, the, I don't no, want the last memory of them dead. Of their dead dad to be. He was an you're asshole. More, you were more stern. At no, a I'm just. Age. A, I'm just soft. I'm okay. just. I'm soft, and uh, and I struggle with with that. Just hard for me to to be that that guy. Um, but yeah, the sound of the running and I have one who own exclusively runs. Yeah. Like, could you just walk and stop flopping on the couch? But then I remember it's, it was fun to always pretend like you're diving to make a catch. Yeah. But I was pretending to make a catch. I wasn't just diving. At, so that'll happen early tomorrow morning. <laughs> I'm sure. But, but like us, I was like, Hey, you guys want to stay up and watch the, uh, Oh, whatever. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I say we could use the extra hour sleep, but we that's if you can get it. Yeah. So youngsters, A, enjoy your Halloween. You get to do that. B, enjoy your extra hour sleep. Um, and uh, there's no C. We'll see in Baton Rouge. Steve. November. Yikes. See, no matter what you do, no matter how many years you've done this, you will tell yourself to make the season last, and then it's November, and you're like, there's three games left. Yeah, it's brutal. Maybe four, but probably for a lot of you, three. Hmm. Two, card, two cards. Winners. Eight and one. Only a couple more weeks. Indiana on the card next week, just blind. Lay them and laugh. Jets were the easiest bet. Of all time. All time. Took a while to get there. It did. I did. didn't watch a second. I was pumped about that. It was not a work of art. Shout to Devonte Adams. He was very nice. He said he, he gets excited to come on the show. And really, that was was really. You're Devonte Adams. You don't have to say that. Nice. I appreciate you. Uh, thanks Got a for lock tomorrow. Pardon? Panthers tomorrow. Just dogs. Bird cage. Oof.
We'll see you for Sports Center. We'll see y'all from Arrowhead. It's supposed to be rainy. Doesn't sound great, but we'll figure it out. Oh, my Giants Jets teasers alive. Giants feel like team right side tomorrow. Mm. Right? World's going to look at that number and go, Commanders, this is free. You're getting 11. You understand how the teasers work? Like, they don't lose, you know, don't they? All right. Stop talking, Scott. Ready, break. <laughs>